The relationship of Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Joan Crawford was one of the most riveting and scandal-ridden romances in Hollywood during the early 30s. Douglas Jr. was Tinseltown royalty, seeing as how his father was the famed and beloved actor Douglas Fairbanks, and his stepmother was the late great Mary Pickford. While Jr. was known as the Prince of Hollywood and followed in his parents' footsteps by also becoming an actor, it was his wife, Crawford, who ultimately became the huge movie star. F. Scott Fitzgerald once wrote of Crawford that she was, without a doubt, the very best example of a flapper. She was the kind of girl you'd see at intellectual nightclubs, always dolled up and possessing an unparalleled level of sophistication. Crawford made her big break in the 1928 film Our Dancing Daughters. A year later, the world was given a chance to watch as she fell in love with her crown prince, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., in the sequel to Our Dancing Daughters, Our Modern Maidens. For film fans, the romance between the two seemed to be a match made in heaven. But as years have gone by, we've learned a lot of juicy and shocking details about the two stars' relationship that shows it wasn't the fairy tale romance that people thought. Beyond that, it seems Joan Crawford wasn't exactly the saintly figure many thought of her as. Numerous accusations, rumors, and revelations have come to light in the decades since her passing in 1977 that warrant investigation. While Rags to Riches stories were extremely popular with Depression era audiences, and Crawford certainly exemplified this trope like none other as she helped popularize the flapper aesthetic, eventually her fame began to wane and by the end of the 30s, she was labeled as box office poison after her film started to lose money. After Fairbanks Jr., whom she divorced in 1923, she went on to marry three more times. Three of her four marriages ended in divorce. In total, she adopted five children. One of those, however, would later be reclaimed by his birth mother. Crawford's relationship with her children was one of the biggest reasons the public lost faith in her. She disinherited her two eldest, and after her death, her daughter published a revealing tell-all memoir titled Mommy Dearest that painted the late star in a hideous light. Join Facts First as we take a closer look at many of the rumors that have plagued Joan Crawford before and after her death. Fairbanks Jr. portrayed Crawford as self-centered. The marriage between Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Joan Crawford was the first for both stars. Fairbanks Jr. was only 19, and Crawford was either 23 or 24, depending on who you ask. Fairbanks Jr. described meeting Crawford as love at first sight, but his parents didn't approve of the relationship. His father called it an over-exploited affair, while his mom called Crawford her son's current chorus girl fling. Immediately, the rumor mill got to work, and accusations that Crawford was merely using Fairbanks Jr. to advance her career began circulating in the gossip rags. But regardless of what anyone had to say, the duo were fairly happy together. Touching on their wedding day in 1929, Fairbanks Jr. later said they were extremely relieved and happy to be married finally. And he further stated they lived happily for a while. As the newlyweds honeymoon phase ended, however, Crawford and Fairbanks Jr. began to drift apart. It wasn't as if they were getting into big explosive arguments or having clandestine affairs, at least not at first. What caused their love to erode was boredom and the banality of marriage. They simply hadn't expected married life to be so mundane. After all, they were both two young, up-and-coming Hollywood stars at the time. They hardly seemed ready to settle down with a life of normalcy. Eventually, Crawford began to look outside her marriage for a bit of excitement and had an affair with Clark Abel. The studio brass was concerned their leading starlet was falling into scandal and controversy, so they set up a second honeymoon excursion for Fairbanks Jr. and Crawford in Europe, hoping it might reignite their passion for each other. Unfortunately, that tactic was ineffective, and according to Douglas, Joan was absolutely miserable the entire trip. All she wanted to do was return back to Hollywood, not the couple's Cialito Lindo home. She missed the security of everything she knew and loved at the MGM Studios. So, breaking with the schedule, the couple returned to the States earlier than expected. At that point, Fairbanks Jr. and Joan Crawford began living very separate lives from each other, even when they were still living together. That only worked for a bit, but inevitably Crawford could couldn't take it any longer and had Fairbanks Jr. kicked out of their house and she moved all his belongings to a hotel. At first, Fairbanks Jr. felt blindsided by the ordeal, but then he learned about Crawford's affair with Gable. In his memoirs, Douglas wrote he had discovered one of Crawford and Gable's favorite hookup spots was the portable dressing room he had purchased for her as a gift. If that's not a stab in the back, we don't know what is. While Fairbanks Jr. certainly had a lot to say negatively about his ex-wife, he defended her after her death when her adopted daughter published her seething tell-all book, Mommy Dearest, in 1978. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for more about Douglas Fairbanks Jr. and Joan Crawford. 
Mommy Dearest, while Joan Crawford was known for many different things throughout her life and career, including her sexuality, femininity, charitable contributions, and her phenomenal body of work, an entirely different and darker picture of the star emerged after her eldest adopted daughter, Christina Crawford, published her previously mentioned tell-all memoir in 1978. According to Christina, Joan was a raging alcoholic and abusive mother who tended to fly off the handle in fits of anger. The public always knew that things between this mother-daughter pair weren't perfect. Their relationship apparently began to fall apart sometime around 1968 when Christina, 29 at the time, took medical leave from her role on the CBS soap opera The Secret Storm only for her mother to replace her. This came as a shock to Christina and drove a wedge between her and her mother. It's rumored Joan knew about her daughter's book before her passing in 1977 but never discussed it openly with her. She did, however, make sure to omit Christina and her brother Christopher from her will for, quote, reasons they knew leaving her estate and wealth instead to her twin daughters Kathy and Cindy as well as to charity. Christina and Christopher later contested getting cut from the will and ultimately won their case. Since the publication of Mommy Dearest, the validity of the scenarios and details described within it have been hotly debated. Fairbanks Jr. for one said the Joan Crawford who was depicted in the memoir, despite the problems he had with her, was not the woman he'd known and once loved. Christina has since published updated 20th and 30th anniversary editions of the book. Other memoirs about her mother, including Possessed and Not the Girl Next Door, Joan Crawford, have been written by other authors in an attempt to discredit Christina's claims. Of course, there was also a satirical film in 1981 of the same name that starred Faye Dunaway. Some of the most notable claims made in Mommy Dearest include the following. Christina claims when she and her brother Christopher were first adopted, they were named Joan Jr. and Philip Terry Jr. after their adoptive father. But when Crawford's marriage with Terry fell apart, she had the children renamed. Christina wrote that her mother hated wire hangers. On one occasion, as was famously depicted in the Mommy Dearest film, she woke Christina up in the middle of the night and dragged her by the hair, screaming, no wire hangers, while beating her profusely until her ears were ringing. Christina also claims her mother once shredded her favorite dress, then forced her to wear it for a week to humiliate her. Beyond that, she insists her mother would do things like starve her and her siblings, tie them up to bedposts with something called a sleep-safe device, and force them to clean up messes they didn't make in the middle of the night for hours on end. All these alleged abuses led Christina to attempt suicide at age 15 while at boarding school. After that event, she says her mother never tried to contact her again or address the situation. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think Joan Crawford was as abusive as her adoptive daughter says she was? Or do you side with Douglas Fairbanks Jr.? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.